We start now with an important part, which is derivatives. How are derivatives defined in mathematics and how might we use them in sciences? We'll find out. Let us assume that y is a dependent variable, which is defined as a function of another variable, a primary variable x. We denote that as y equals f of x. By definition, the derivative of a function is the variation of this function relative to the variation of a primary variable in that function, here it is x, over a small interval. We denote derivatives as y prime being dy by dx or the derivative of y relative to x. This is the limit of delta y by delta x as delta x tends to zero. These notations, when you say y prime or when you say dy by dx, this is widely used in mathematics. However, dy by dx is rarely used in math in secondary classes, but it's widely used in physics. Now, both notations are correct. dy by dx is what's known as Leibniz notation, while y prime is the Lagrange notation. There is another notation we use a lot in physics, which is the dot, y dot, being dy by dt. This is the Newtonian notation, which is used mainly when the main variable or the primary variable is time t. Now that we talked about the meaning of a derivative, which is the variation of a function relative to a certain variable called the primary variable, what does a derivative mean graphically, or how is a derivative interpreted in a graph? If you have a graph showing y as function of x, joining any two points, the ratio delta y by delta x is nothing but the slope of the secant cutting the curve at two points of abscissas x1 and x2. So if you take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or delta y over delta x, you are simply calculating the slope of the secant. So far, nothing new. However, if you assume that delta x now tends to zero, as if x1 and x2 are squeezed towards each other, the secant becomes almost a tangent. In this case, instead of writing delta y by delta x, as delta x tends to zero, or delta x is too small, this notation becomes dy by dx. And we call that the derivative of y relative to x at this point. So when delta x tends to zero, the secant almost becomes tangent. The derivative y prime, which is dy by dx, evaluated at a point, and this is denoted as dy by dx at x1 over here gives the slope of the tangent to the curve at that point. So in general, derivative means variation of y with respect to x. Definitely we mean derivative of y relative to x. When you go graphically or when you consider a graph, derivative at a point, evaluated at a point, is the slope of the tangent at that particular point. Now, applying what we have seen so far, we will solve application 7 in which we are asked to determine the derivative of each function given the tangent to the curve of that function. In figure 1, you are given line t tangent to the curve at the origin. In the second graph, also the function is c of f or the graph of f of x. The tangent at 0 is also drawn in red and here the tangent passes by two points. It's up to you to try to solve that, and don't forget, always discuss your answers with your instructor. In addition to the graphical interpretation of derivatives, derivatives can also be used analytically with a function without any graph. What are some basic derivatives that we deal with, whether in mathematics or in sciences and mainly physics? The first table shows the variable y given as in terms of x. The derivative of y is directly a derivative in x. For example, if y is constant, then y prime or the derivative is zero. If y equals to x, the derivative is one. If y equals ax, then y prime equals to a. 
Here we do not go in the details of how are these derivatives determined because I think you have seen them before. Y equals X square, Y prime becomes 2X. This equation, which is known as the golden rule of derivatives is so far, y equals x to power m, the derivative becomes m, x to power m minus 1, as if the derivative's order or power decreases by 1. Now, considering the general case in which y is given as a function of u, a variable, and u in turn is a function of x. So here we have y is a function of u, and u is a function of x. If you derive y with respect to x, you need to have an intermediate stage, which is u. For that, you notice the first couple of derivatives, nothing changes. If you look at this derivative, y equals au, compare it to y equals ax. When you derive this, we got only a. But here we will get a multiplied by the direct derivative u prime. Same thing, u, y equals u squared. Its derivatives is the same as before, 2u resembling 2x, but we have the direct derivative u prime. So anytime you have a third variable taking place or taking action, we need to multiply by the direct derivative when we calculate the general derivatives. For example, y equals u squared, y prime becomes 2u multiplied by u prime u prime is the direct derivative of u relative to x. Note that when we go to physics, the primary variable is time t. We've talked about this when we discussed the Newtonian notation, but it's worth rem reminding you over here. So when you write y prime, it is simply dy by dx, by dt, not dx. And when we say x prime, it is dx by dt. Try to solve application 8, which has seven direct exercises or examples about derivatives uh, of functions. When you finish these, try to discuss them with, with your instructors, because derivatives is a very important lesson in mathematics, which is used in physics and other sciences.